Welcome back, everybody. Our friend Dr. Marty McCary is with us now of Johns Hopkins University Medical Center. And a uh, book that he's written is out today, Blind Spots, When Medicine Gets It Wrong and What It Means for Our Health. It is already the number two bestseller in America on Amazon. Congrats for that one. Dr. McCary, great to have you on the program once again. Good to be with you guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, let, let, let's just dive right into it. Uh, I want to give you the floor, Doc. I mean, we saw it during COVID. Uh, not only were people going along in groupthink, but they remained steadfast in their wrongthink as their groupthink fell apart when the data and evidence came in. And it feels like there's been no self-reflection within medical circles, but you would know much better than us. So what are you seeing? Yeah, look, I have not seen any humility for any one of the many mistakes during COVID, but the book I have doesn't really talk much about COVID because people are sick of it and it's kind of tribal, but COVID was a little peek into how a broader medical establishment works with groupthink and blinders on. If you look at the track record of healthcare over the last 50 years in America, it's been a failure. It's been a total failure. Sure, we're better at doing certain operations and emergency care, but diabetes now has affected one in five children. Half of kids today are, are overweight or obese. Um, Autism goes up 14% every year for the last 23 consecutive years. And in my field of pancreatic cancer, cancer rates have doubled in the last two, two decades. So who is stopping to say, hey, what's going on here? We have a poison food supply. We have these highly engineered chemicals. We add pesticides. And nobody is talking about these root causes in healthcare. We're talking to Dr. Marty McCary. Uh, you were so right uh, about everything having to do with COVID. So for people out there who are interested in uh, in, in potentially reading this book, I would encourage them just to do it because you've been willing to speak out and challenge conventional orthodoxy. And that brings me to this question. Scientific American, which is a magazine that I believe has existed for basically 180 years, nearly a 200-year-old publication, in 2020 decided they had to endorse a presidential candidate for the first time in their history. They endorsed Donald Trump. Now, again, in 2024, sorry, they endorsed Joe Biden. Now, again, in 2024, they are endorsing Kamala Harris against Donald Trump. What does it do to science to you for it to have become so political that a magazine, which theoretically only exists to cover science, would feel compelled to have a favored presidential candidate? <laughs> well, Clay, it exposes them for who they are that are political uh, activists at the top of modern medicine. Mo look, most doctors and health professionals are amazing people. They come to the field out of a sense of compassion and wanting to help people. But a small group of doctors at the top are making all the decisions, and they've decided to get political. New England Journal of Medicine, the same thing. They were staunchly apartisan for 208 years, and just the last presidential election decided to endorse Biden with the rationale that, if we could only get Donald Trump to wear a cloth mask a little more frequently, then we could end the pandemic. That's what they thought. It's it's stunning. We're talking to Dr. Marty McCary, blind spots when medicine gets it wrong and what it means for our health. I mean, Doc, I'm wondering, in the book, do you go into uh, some areas where medicine has historically gotten it so very wrong I mean, where the consensus just fell flat on its face? I, mean, I know you could go back to, uh, what was it, John Snow in 1870s London, Doctor, wasn't it Dr. Snow and yes. figuring out where typhus outbreaks were? There's that great book, The Ghost Map. But I mean, there's a lot of examples, right, through even much more recent examples of institutional medicine saying this has to be right. And we find out it's actually not. Yeah. Uh, Buck, so there's look, there's an illusion of consensus today around so many health recommendations that the medical establishment has perfectly backwards. They demonized natural fat for 60 years, igniting the refined carbohydrate added sugar addiction that led to the obesity epidemic. They got opioids are non-addictive wrong for 30 years. They got peanut allergy prevention wrong for 15 years. They just recently corrected that. They get so many of these big recommendations wrong when they don't use good science. People need to know the truth about gut health and these giant blind spots that we don't talk about in modern medicine but but are central to health and longevity and the health of our nation's children and that's why i wrote this book give me a couple of things that is writing this book you found that you think americans should be doing for either themselves or their kids that are not particularly massive in detail right i mean there's some things everybody should be doing you should be walking more you should be working out more right but 
in terms of health, what two or three pieces of advice that aren't overwhelming would you give our audience right now that you think could make a difference in how they feel and their uh, their livelihoods and also their longevity? We have to take care of our gut health. The millions of bacteria that line our intestine are integral to digestion, training the immune system, and even involved in mood. So studies are showing taking antibiotics you don't need are making us sick. Unnecessary C-sections change that microbiome. And if you think pesticides are effective in killing pests, guess what they're doing to your gut bacteria? They're, having, they're doing damage as well. And it's causing a chronic inflammation. The body's reacting to all these chemicals like seed oils that are not natural as they sound. They're derivatives and they're chemicals. And so the body is, does not react with a, an acute inflammatory response. It has a low-grade response, and it makes people feel sick. And most of our modern illnesses, most chronic diseases, and many cancers are caused by inflammation. So don't cook with corn oil and vegetable oil and soybean oil, canola, thinking they're, sa they're natural. Cook with avocado oil, extra virgin olive oil, and um, other healthy oils. <laughs> Doc, there, there's this uh, this realization that I think became pretty widespread in the last maybe 10 years that people go through medical school four years and they residency and it's all this really time intensive, impressive knowledge, memorization, et cetera, that comes with it. But I, I think I've heard that that standard MD program, there's like a day or maybe a week that even deals with nutrition. I mean, you're laying out how much the food that we eat affects in the most real and important ways, psychological health, physical health. Are they getting better about that in med school? Because it feels like if they're skipping it there, when are these doctors going to catch up on it? No, they're getting worse. And you're right. We're turning these bright, creative young kids into robots with a reflex. We tell them to memorize all this useless stuff they don't have to know on demand. They have to also memorize medications so they learn just how to diagnose and treat, and no one's talking about the root causes of illnesses. And the nutrition part is basically absent. I was just talking to a medical student from a school in the, in the U.S., and he was telling me he got two hours of nutrition training in his medical school. And when we talked about what they, were what they taught him, it was the old broken food pyramid nonsense from the government. The government spread a lot of misinformation on nutrition and food, so it would have been better probably for him to have zero time studying nutrition given what they were teaching him. Dr. Marty McCary with us right now. The book, which is skyrocketing, by the way, up bestseller list, is uh, is out today. Uh, that blind book, spots, blind spots. Yes, I'm looking at it. it's the number 26 overall bestseller in all of America on Amazon, literally at this moment. So many people are buying it. That's an incredible debut for you on Amazon, Doc. So congrats. I want to ask you this though, and you and I have talked about this some, but Buck and I are both nerds uh, when it comes to history. We love history. The study of science is overwhelmingly filled throughout all of history with people who have challenged conventional authority and ended up right, maybe 100 years down the line, maybe a couple of hundred years. Um, is it really science at all for so many people out there to be saying, only trust the consensus, never challenge anything? Isn't that the antithesis of science itself and <laughs> doesn't that reflect a particularly stultifying idea that is ahistorical in nature because you're not looking back i mean look uh, several hundred years ago the most brilliant uh, doctors out there when you got sick would have said hey the way we got to treat this make sure that we take as much blood out of your body as we possibly can um it's not just that oftentimes people are wrong it's that they're actually doing the exact opposite of what they should be doing you know, people have raw memories of what they just saw our government do. Uh, the government reamed through an emergency approval of a novel vaccine for young, healthy kids. They fired the two vaccine experts at the FDA who objected to its approval. They then forced it and required it on, on, on many people. And then they silenced the doctors who expressed their concerns. That's the most dangerous thing a government can do. But it turns out that whole dynamic with Anthony Fauci and people who had different opinions being suppressed, that is the story of many of the modern medicine health recommendations. Hormone replacement therapy for postmenopausal women is amazing. Women live longer, feel better. It prevents Alzheimer's. Uh, all of these benefits are overwhelming, but there's an NIH doctor 22 years ago 
who announced that it caused breast cancer, even though his own data never supported it. So sadly to this day, 50 million women have been denied this incredible therapy at the time of menopause. And so people need to know the truth. 80% of doctors still believe that dogma, that hormone therapy causes breast cancer, because it was an NIH guy. And an NIH guy doing a study with Harvard and Stanford doctors must be correct, right? That's the power of groupthink. And that's what we have to challenge. Dr. McCary, um, wondering, and I know this is a big topic, but someone told me recently, a friend of mine said, do you know how many uh, vaccines are on the CDC website or Cleveland Clinic, for example? I'm, I'm on their website right now looking as I talk to you or on the, what's the, the vaccine schedule. And I said, uh, I don't know, like five or 10. And I think the number that I was given was something like uh, like 40 or 50. 72. Um, 72. There you go. 72. Uh, I mean, we got hep B, rotavirus, diphtheria, hemophilus, pneumococcal, inactivated polio, rotavirus, DTA. I mean, I just go all 72 are right here in front of me that, I, you know, I grew up thinking, oh, my gosh, vaccines have sort of uh, saved so many millions and millions of lives. And I know there are very, very good vaccines. It's a huge advance. But 72 seems like a lot. <laughs> Well, um, a couple of them are given together, so it's not 72 different sticks. But um, does a child need a hepatitis B vaccine within an hour of being born? Is that a nice way to welcome a human to the world? Stick them with a hepatitis B vaccine? It's a sexually acquired infection. What are we doing giving it to newborns? It's not like, you know, hey, we've captured the aliens, so we got to vaccinate them while we have them in our hospital walls. Um, so we need, so you can't challenge, they're sacred cows. You cannot challenge any vaccine in medicine because the oligarchs have said it's a belief system. You either believe in them or you don't. So if you, if you raise a couple questions about some, they have a way of railroading, uh, folks, but you know, now we can talk around them. Now we've got podcasts and social media and books and many other things out there. And we need to challenge these deeply held assumptions. Maybe we need to treat more diabetes with cooking classes than just throwing insulin at everybody. Maybe we need to talk about school lunch programs, not just putting every overweight kid on Ozempic. Maybe we need to talk about environmental exposures that cause cancer, not just the chemo to treat it. They have such blinders on. And if they would have one-tenth of the enthusiasm they have for vaccines for addressing our poison food supply, we'd have a much healthier country. We're talking to Dr. Marty McCary. His book, Surging Up Bestseller List, encourage you to check it out. Um, and uh, like I said, it's all the way to number Blind spots in the nation. Blind spots. I bet we can make that almost number one by the time he finishes this interview. Uh, you were just talking about the uh, uh, getting all the vaccine shots and everything else, Doc. Um, when you look at, uh, at, at, at the COVID shot right now, would you encourage anyone to be getting that shot for their kids or themselves at this point? Or do you think everybody's already had it? There is truly zero benefit at this point. Look, we were told the vaccine is what was going to beat the pandemic and get us out of the pandemic. You know what got us out of the pandemic was natural immunity. So I'll call me a little old fashioned. I want to see a proper randomized clinical trial before recommending any novel medication to anybody. And that's going to be my position with all medications. Thanks, Doc. Drive that book all the way, Blind Spots, up to number one. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, he's fantastic, and he was right about everything on COVID. Thursday, I'm going to try to be right about everything on football. And I want all of you to go sign up right now so you can be ready to play when we go for a 10-for-1 winner on Thursday. And here's how you do it. Sign up for Prize Picks right now. Use my name, Clay. You get $50 instantly when you play $5. You can do this in Texas. You can do this in California. You can do this in Georgia. Over 30 states out there right now. Trust me, it's fun. We're going to try to hit a 10X winner on Friday. Sorry, Thursday. I will give you this, but go ahead and download the app today. PrizePicks.com. Use my name, Clay. And if you place a $5 uh, picks, you get $50 guaranteed. Again, it's super simple, prizepicks.com. My name, Clay, do it today.